Hello and welcome back. Today I want to share with you some tips and techniques on how to edit motion in my all-time favourite filmmaking app, LumaFusion. Now, if you haven't heard of this app already, then I seriously urge you to go and check it out because it is a seriously powerful video editing app. That little piece of intro B-roll was edited entirely using LumaFusion. And indeed, so is this whole video. The motion in all but one of those clips was created digitally using keyframes right within the LumaFusion app. So let's jump right in and show you how it's done. So you can see I have all my clips lined up here on the timeline ready to begin. So we're going to double tap on the first clip which is going to open up the editor. So you can see the lines at the bottom here allow us to scrub through the clip that we have selected. So let's bring that to the beginning where we want the motion to start and we're going to hit size and position at the bottom there. This is going to create our first keyframe. We can then increase the overall size of the clip using the sliders on the right. Then reposition the clip either by dragging it or changing the XY position again on the right hand side. I'm going to bring it here, this is where I want the motion to start. We can then jump to the end of the clip and then reposition this again either using the X or Y sliders or simply dragging it on the screen. This is where we want the motion to finish. Once we're happy with where these are, we can quickly scrub through the clip to make sure the motion is as natural as it can be, and then we'll hit the arrow on the top left of the screen there to take us back to the overall timeline. Moving along to the next clip here of the Vox Amplifier, again double clicking it to bring up the editor, scrubbing through this clip we can already see that there's motion captured in camera. So on this particular clip I'm not going to add any motion, instead what I'm going to do is actually fade this clip in. First I'm going to scrub through the clip to find where I want the fade to end. Then by selecting blending you can see it brings up the opacity fader. I'm going to create a keyframe here and then bring the timeline back to the beginning of the clip. Then I can reduce the opacity so it is now black on screen. Here we have our fade. Jumping back to the timeline we can check that's exactly how we intend it to be and look at the next clip. Some horizontal motion would again work well here so we'll double tap the clip to open up the editor. Again, we'll first of all enlarge the image, which will allow us to move it round within the frame. Then we'll come to the beginning, set the keyframe here. So here we can reposition the clip to be exactly where we want it, and we can see that we have the black bars here just visible, so we can perfectly frame that. We're going to jump to the end of the clip, and again reposition this to where we want it to end. Take care not to go inside the white lines, as this denotes exactly what will be visible on the overall screen. Coming back to the timeline, I want to zoom in and focus right on what the hand is doing and have the motion follow its movements. I'm going to level this clip up as it was shot slightly wonky. Then ensuring at the beginning of the timeline I'm going to go ahead and increase the size to exactly where I want that to be. Now I think it would look good if uh, it was exactly in line with the controls on the amplifier so that looks good. I'm going to move that clip over now to select its starting position and then when I'm happy with that I'll jump to the end of the clip timeline and then we can select its finish position. Now I can still see that the clip is in fact a little bit wonky. However, adjusting rotation in LumaFusion is not particularly an easy job. Even though I'm using the Apple Pencil here and not my finger, it is still quite difficult as it does jump around all over the place. This is definitely something I'd like to see addressed in a future update, bringing better accuracy. However, it's not unmanageable. So jumping back into the timeline here, we can review what we've just done. I'm quite happy with that, so let's move on to the next clip. Here I'd like to add a different kind of movement. So as the thumb comes down and strikes the string, I'd like to zoom in and follow it on its journey. So in the editor, we can create a keyframe at the beginning of the clip, then jump to the end of the clip and increase the size. And you can see that when we start to move the size slider, it automatically creates a keyframe for us. I'm just going to reposition this so it sits nicely between the cinematic black letterbox bars that I've placed on top of all of the clips. If you'd be interested in seeing how I've added these letterbox bars, also how I've colour graded it and pre-trimmed the clips, then drop me a comment below and I can happily make more tutorials on LumaFusion. Now jumping back into the timeline, we can review that and see exactly how that fits into the story. So coming on to the last clip here. I want to show you something a little different with this clip and illustrate how it's possible to use multiple keyframes in order to create different types of motion within the one clip. So I'm going to keyframe the beginning and the end of the clip as beforehand, however, this time I'm going to scrub back to the centre of the clip where I'm going to change the overall position. That way the clip is going to move vertically up and then vertically down again between the beginning and the end of the clip. So. 
let's just play that back. Now we can see as we scrub through, the position of the clip moves up and then back down again. So we're using multiple keyframes here in order to create different movement. I am honestly blown away by how powerful this little app is. Things such as keyframes are often the preserve of really powerful and expensive desktop editing software such as Premiere Pro. And to have these right on your iPad that you can take anywhere is just phenomenal. Yes, this app does set you back a total of £20 in the UK, but I think for what you're getting, it's honestly worth it. And I know there are much cheaper editing apps out there, including the famous iMovie, which comes free with the iPad anyway. But none of them offer this much control or feel quite like you're using desktop editing software in the same way LumaFusion does. Yes, it has its flaws, but if you're on a shoestring budget and you can't even sell your grandmother because she's gone a bit crispy around the edges, you can pick up an iPad and LumaFusion for less than the price of Final Cut Pro. Now that's worth thinking about. Put simply, LumaFusion makes nailing professional edits far more achievable than before. Thank you so much for watching guys. And if you want any more videos like this in the future where I talk about tips and techniques on how to use apps like LumaFusion, then drop me a comment below. Thank you, take care, and I'll see you next time.